Simon Cohen is my next guest on the one-on-one -on -one series. And Simon owns the biggest real estate buyer's advocacy business in Australia and also the star of Lux Listing Sydney. I'm sure you'll recognise him. He's going to talk to us about personal brand and what it takes to overcome the fear and the psychological um, issues you may have in growing your business. Simon, you started Cohen Handler in 09, is that correct? Correct. So what gave you the motivation or the thought that that would work or that you could do it? Uh -huh. Well, I guess, first of all, when I started it and I said I was going to be a buyer's agent, um, I was met with a lot of resistance. Mm. My family and friends in particular thought I was crazy. <laughs> Um, I was 24, 25 at the time, okay. and I had been a real estate agent prior to that. Yeah. And um, as, as a lot of people in real estate do, you know, yeah, that's uh, start. I was doing well and making really good money. Yeah. Um, and so um, it was a tough decision to give up something that was working. But um, yep. as a real estate agent, I was dealing with buyers. Um, and I was just struggling with the fact that I could only show them the stock that that my firm had at the time, yep. and I couldn't show them all the other stock that was around there. Mm -hmm. And I was also struggling with the fact that, you know, we've got a, a process uh, in real estate, and there was no one representing the buyer in that process at the time, yep. right? And so I just saw this, this niche, this opportunity mm. to create a part of the process mm. where buyers, I guess, were empowered mm. um, and they had representation. Because mm. the vendors do. Because the vendors do and, and, yeah. and really the buyers, the on buyers had no one. They're they on had their own. no way to find off-market opportunities, no yeah. one to guide them, no one to tell them, you know, what something's worth and why. And combine that also with a passion that I wanted to create, I guess, a culture in a business um, where if I didn't own it, I would be able to work there and I would want to work there. And so I thought, you know what, I'm 24, 25, it's now or never, and uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. That's a very interesting point. So the culture that, you've, that, you've, that you envisaged at that time has been the catalyst to actually growing this into a sizable business. I think it's actually been a key part of it. I mean. I worked somewhere before where I worked for the boss and I would mm. I would do things that, you know, got us into doors, signed up multi, multi million dollar properties, mm. and I would get say taken advantage of. <laughs> and I yeah. I thought to myself, what a what a small minded mentality because mm. the more I make, the more he my makes. bosses make. Yeah. Why wouldn't they want that to continue? Mm. And so when I started Cohen Handler in my business, it was about everyone doing well because the more, the more, the more. And um, that was a big business lesson for me at a mm. very early age. Uh, you've got branches where? All over the place. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, Byron. Wow. And when did you decide to expand like that? Um, I mean, we expanded into Brisbane six years ago. Oh, okay. And then the rest have just grown over time. And then we expanded into commercial business and property management. And mm. um, we're about to launch a seller's advocacy business. And mm. so, yeah, there's, there's been a lot that's come from it. I have to say, you know how to grow a business. And, but for a lot of people, they struggle with those thoughts and they don't know how to do it. There's always that, I mean, you've obviously managed it. Everyone's got it. How do I do it? Can I do it? How did you... What advice would you give to someone that's at that tipping point? It's going to sound very simple and very easy, but I literally would look in the mirror and say to myself, what is the worst thing that can happen? Okay. When I started Cohen Handler, I said to myself, what is the worst thing that could happen? Mm. It won't work and I go back to being a real estate agent. Yeah. You know, everyone overthinks every situation. Mm. Um, and I was actually having this conversation with one of my staff today who unfortunately has to have an operation and we were talking about the unknown mm. is more scary than the actual procedure in this case, right? What is the worst that can happen? If well, you actually think about 
mm. that mm. you'll do everything because it's it's never as bad as it can be. Yeah. What's brilliant about life is that what can happen is so good and mm. so rewarding and so exciting mm. that if you don't do it, you're always going to live with the what if. Mm. And in, in my philosophy, to live a life about what if is not a life worth living. Well put. So what would be your top tips for uh, an agent trying to build their own profile? Mm. So I think my top tip, number one would be decide where you belong, where you want to be known as, right? Mm. So let's say, you know, we're in Brookvale right now. Let's mm -hmm. say it's in Brookvale, right? Mm. So you want to become the king or queen of Brookvale. Mm. And so you need to market to the world mm. why you are the person who knows the most about Brookvale, whether it's buying or selling, than anyone else, right? right? And then you want to market why you're the person that they should trust with selling or buying the probably the biggest asset they'll ever they'll ever transact on, right? Yes. And is it integrity you stand for? Is it honesty you stand for? Is it social media that you're the best at that that you stand for, right? So I think I can tell people a thousand things, but for me, from my experiences, you have to know inside what you believe in because yeah. what you believe in you'll portray. Um, yeah. You can't pretend to be something you're not. Yes. And having that deep product knowledge so people have the trust in you to guide them. Product knowledge to me is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how I was able to grow my business. It's how our business is operated and run. And I would not want to hire anyone for any type of service who isn't more of an expert doesn't know what they're doing. than I. <laughs> oh, okay. No yeah. point going to a doctor yeah. who doesn't know more about medicine <laughs> than I do, right? Why would you go to a real estate agent or a buyer's agent who doesn't know more than you? Okay, so that's brave. You've got people that work for you that know more than you. Well, no, that's In particular that, areas. No, yeah, exactly. That's what the point you're making. 100%. Yeah. I'm not an area expert in certain areas. Of course not. And they're not an area expert in certain areas. Yes. And when I'm looking to buy something or someone else is, you go to that area expert. How has tech influenced the growth of your business and the way you do business? I'm probably the wrong person to ask about that <laughs> because... I'm not the most technologically savvy person. We might leave that alone because I am. I'm not either. <laughs> but what I will say, and I can't speak about tech, but what I will say is I think social media is such a powerful tool. Okay. And I think anyone who's running a business who believes that when they make a sale, they're the king or queen mm. um, is wrong. You need... You can't sell a secret and you, you need the world to know about your achievements, right? Mm. And social media is an incredible platform if you do it correctly and you do it sophisticated and you do it in the right way. I think that to me is about as much on tech as I can touch on, but I think it is so important and so um, powerful. And it's a complicated area that, that I think that people need some guidance on. Oh yeah, look, I look at social media and there are people out there who do it incredibly well and there are people out there who do it incredibly poorly. Mm. Um, and I think you really have to find a way to do it in which portrays you mm. and also speaks to your audience in the world about what you stand for and what you're doing and mm. what you're achieving mm -hmm. in a way that isn't arrogant or tacky, mm. but in a way that it can be so much more powerful than anything else. I agree with you. And talking about promoting um, Lux Listing Sydney, how's that helped you in building your own personal profile? I mean, I think the best thing about Lux Listings is that it shared to the world what we do. You know, buyer's mm. agency isn't as known as real estate agents. Mm, sure. And so it did share to the world what we do and who we are and what we stand for mm -hmm. and the value we add. And for mm -hmm. me, that's the reason I did it and why it was so mm -hmm. important. And also gave the world a look inside of Cohen Handler and our lives. And mm -hmm. I think that's been really nice because people see mm -hmm. how hard we work and where we fit into the process. And it's, and it's uh, highlighted Sydney too on the world stage as well, which, certainly has been, has. which has been really fabulous for everybody. It certainly has. If there's one, um, 
one property that you've secured for um, for some for a particular person that stands out as a most memorable, uh, being difficult or high profile or most valuable? I don't know. Is there one that's sort of it's like, oh, well, that was incredible? Um, it's funny, you know. Some of the most valuable have been some of the easiest, and they've been some of the hardest. I think mm. for me, I don't know if there's there's one that stood out. But the ones that always stand out in my mind are either the ones that were the most challenging, mm -hmm. the hardest ones to get across the line. Yeah. The ones where, you know, I think about a house I bought recently for $35 million and it wasn't for sale and I called the agent and I said, I've got to buy it for this. And he said, it's not for sale. And I said, you need to call the owner. Mm. This is the buyer. Mm. We need to get this deal done. And... From a deal, from a house that wasn't for sale to a deal that exchanged for thirty five million dollars. For me, that that's wow. the exciting part. So it's the it's the challenging ones. Yes. Because when you've been doing it as long as I have, <laughs> it's the challenge that gets you out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Um. Not the not the price. I'm really grateful you. that you came in and saw us today. It's a pleasure. I love watching you on TV as well. Thank you. Simon. Thank you. Thanks Cheers, for having mate. me. Thank you.